Hello there and welcome to MCI Studios with me, Pippin Henderson. Today we are looking at MIDI. We have had um, quite a lot of questions actually uh, regarding MIDI, how to set them up. Um, it really couldn't be easier, this won't take uh, too long at all. And before you know it, you'll be up and running and uh, creating all kinds of MIDI tracks. So uh, let's get stuck in. But first of all, I really would like to take this opportunity to thank you all for all your comments and your questions and all your feedback and all your support. It really does mean a lot. And thank you for subscribing. Um, I will continue to make tutorials. Um, I love doing it. So uh, let's uh, let's crack on, shall we? Okay, what we've got here, um, this is just a little... Um, taster for you just to get you an idea of what you can and can't do with MIDI. Uh, well actually more of a more of a, a look at what you can do with MIDI. Um, there isn't a hell of a lot that you can't do. Um, this also incorporates um, audio, it's got audio vocals, it's got audio drums with it. Um, but the, the main riff, the bass, is all MIDI. So uh, take a listen, enjoy, and then we'll go into a nice clean template and uh, go into how we can uh, Start making some MIDI tracks of our own. Have a listen. Hold it high. This is what you said. It's a fine line between love and dreaming. Hold it up high and shout it out. Love is freedom, she said. Love is freedom. It's been hard to So that's uh, it's a song I've been working on for quite a while now. It's nearly finished, um, but we're going to get uh, we're going to get away from this now and just go into a nice clean uh, template of our own. And there it is, and we're going to start adding in our own uh, soft synth tracks now, and just seeing how uh, all that can be incorporated into making a song. Okay, so the first thing you want to make sure is that whatever device you're using is set up and recognized within Sonar. And we do that by making sure that in the P, press P on your um, keyboard and bring up the Preferences tab, tab and make sure that in MIDI and Devices, your MIDI controller or your MIDI keyboard or whatever it is you're going to be using is selected within Sonar. It's recognized, there it is, there's mine, there's my Keyrig 49 and it is selected. Once you've done that, make sure you click Apply, click OK and exit out of the screen. I'm going to come up here to the right here. This is the um, this is the browser tab, and it's a wonderful piece of uh, um, equipment here, or wonderful piece that we, that Sonar uh, have been, has incorporated into Sonar X1. Uh, it, it really does maximise your workflow and speeds things up a hell of a lot. But we're going to come over to the third tab here and browse synth rack. This is where all your soft synths will be placed. When you add them in, and we add them in by, <coughs> excuse me, add them in by clicking the plus, insert soft synth, and I'm going to come down here to Z3TA plus. Don't ask me what that stands for. I have no idea, but it is a wonderful program, and it's what I use to create a lot of the synths that you heard just a minute ago. I'm going to make it a simple instrument track. I'm going to click OK. Now, please bear in mind that. A lot of this is automatic. I've had a lot of questions um, regarding how to set up your inputs and your outputs uh, when it comes to MIDI. Uh, a lot of this is done for you. Once you've inserted or you've selected your MIDI track and make sure that it is within your preferences window, within the MIDI devices, make sure that it is selected and you've clicked apply and it is working within Sonar. Um, your inputs and your outputs are pretty much done for you. Um, there are other things that uh, if you want to, say if we're dealing with Edderall Orchestral for, for instance, it's a wonderful soft synth that allows you to have multiple tracks within one synth. Um, if you're dealing with that, then there's a few things that other that you have to do, and we'll go into that in a minute. But if not, if you're just dealing with one synth, it's pretty much all done for you. Um, but just to um, clarify that, now all I've done is, you've seen me, I've made sure that my Cubic 49 is selected, I've inserted the synth, 
and I'm just gonna um, just gonna whack the volume down a bit because it's gonna be a bit loud for you guys. I'm gonna whack it down to about there, say. Now I haven't done anything else, and I'm gonna hit one of my keys on my keyboard, and it will work. You see, now I haven't inserted any, I haven't touched the inputs or the outputs yet. It's done all that for me. Now if we go over here to the input and the output, um, my input here is set to all inputs, which basically means whatever you've got plugged in is going to use. But if you want to specifically use the keyword 49, come down here to keyword 49, um, select MIDI Omni, unless, unless there's a, a specific um, channel within your controller you want to use, in which case you select it here, but I'm selecting all of them. And I'm going through a master bus. If I come down here to the bus pane, you'll notice I have a master bus here. And I'm going through that. If I haven't got a bus, I'd make sure that my sound card was selected here. We've been through all this. And if this soft synth is multi-channel, I would come down here and select whatever channel I wanted to use within this synth. But at the moment, I'm not. I'm just using it as is. And it's working fine. I can, I can skip through all these different... Uh, all these different effects here and it will work fine. All I have to do then is arm the track, record it. And there it is. You know, and you'd, you'd build up your tracks and uh, build up your tracks like that. It's, um, it's, there isn't much to it really when, if you're using um, synths like this, just one-offs. However, you do have to go into a bit more detail if you want to add multi-tracks, and let's uh, delve into that now. I'm going to delete this, and then delete this, and I'm going to add another soft synth. I'm going to add Ederol Orchestral. It's a wonderful plugin. Again, I'm going to add a simple instrument track. I'm going to click OK. And you'll notice it has um, created the track for me, just like the other synth that we've just used. Um, but this one, however, is a multi-track um, capable synth. And what that means is that I can have this here as a kind of um, MIDI source track. And what that means is, because we selected a single instrument track, it means that if we come to effects here, now bear in mind that this track here will trigger the first track within our synth, which is the flute vibrato. So if I click a key, you'll notice that it triggered the flute here. Um, and I can add audio effects to this, because it is a, an, uh, an instrument track, we can add audio effects to it. So I could add, I don't know, more reverb if I wanted to. Just like that. I'm going to delete that. But let's say that that's great. We've got all the setup. We've got the flutes triggered. Uh, that's wonderful. But we don't want to have to add another orchestral um, synth to be able to get uh, the oboe or, you know, or any other sound. What we want to do is get all these sounds that we have here. And you can actually come into this and select whatever instrument you want. But let's say we're happy with what we've got here, and we want to add the oboe, but we don't want to have to add another orchestral. So what we can do is we can come in here to the track view, right click, insert MIDI track, open it up, and come down to this drop down view here, select inputs and outputs. And there's a few things that you can do here. You can, you can leave all inputs selected if you want to, but I'm going to, just for, for now, I'm going to select Keyword 49 as my, my input. Now for my output, I don't want to go through my sound card. I want to go through the soft synth, which is selected here. I want to go through my orchestral. And in my channel, I want to channel two, which is where the oboe vibrato is. Now if I click my Keyword 49 now, you'll notice that it triggers the oboe. You'll also notice that here in the... Um, the volume indicator, it also gets triggered within this. This is because this is our MIDI source, which means if, for instance, I um, put in the reverb that we put in earlier and whacked it up, it would apply it to this. 
but it will also apply it to this one. So bear that in mind. If you're going to add audio effects um, in this way, then it will affect all the other tracks underneath it. Uh, also make sure that you you name your um, your track, otherwise it's going to get very confusing. If you, if you put 16 tracks in here and you don't name them, it's going to get very confusing. Um, again, let me just repeat this process. I'm going to go to the inputs and outputs. The input is my controller, my output is my synth, and I want channel 3 and that will trigger the clarinet. This one will be the oboe, and this one will be the flute. Um, to actually multi-play them all together, you want to come up here to the, um, you want to select these. Now it, it, it gets a little confusing actually, to be fair, when you select these, and I'll, I'll go into that another, another time, and there's a certain way of doing it, um, where you can actually play um, you, you can play all of them uh, at the same time, um, but we'll go into that later. All I'm doing now is answering a few questions that have been asked of me of how to set things up. That is how to set um, multi-track uh, MIDI up. Um, the other way was, to, was how to um, create just a simple instrument track. This is a bit more complicated and if I just um, put that as cloud there for clarinet. Um, if you say you've got 16 tracks here um, of audio and you've got you know the clarinet, the, the bassoon, the French horn, blah 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 blah, all the way to the harp, um, it would be adv advisable to put all those tracks into a track folder just to keep them nice and neat and out of the way you can collapse and expand them as you wish. Uh, I'm going to close this now, I'm going to show you how to do that. What you want to do is select and drag, multi-select right click, you want to move to folder, new track folder, and that's going to automatically put all those tracks that we have there into a nice handy folder and we can uh, name that orchestral and now we can expand and collapse as we wish and just, just it just saves a lot of space if we've got a lot of audio, tr audio tracks here and some more MIDI tracks maybe, you know um, and we can just expand and collapse and just um, create a whole uh, a load of uh, space for us. And indeed, you can select them if you know if they were a group and you move to folder, new track folder, and there we are. We've got another track folder there. So it's uh, it's very simple, very easy to do. That's the basics of MIDI. I will go into a little bit more detail now because I'm coming up to uh, 14 minutes now. I will go into um, how to uh, record some MIDI, how to uh, maybe do um, yeah, maybe do a basic song from scratch. Um, we'll do some quantize, um, how to uh, get it all to fit nicely and how it all uh, works lovely in, in Sonar. So I hope this all made sense. If it doesn't, don't hesitate to leave any uh, questions or comments. Um, or alternatively, go to uh, www.mcistudios uh, co uk I'm sorry, studio co uk sorry, uh, and uh, feel free to email me any questions. Uh, I'll see you next time for another tutorial. Um, take care, have fun, and I'll see you next time.